Welcome to the strangest series on my channel, and it is paying homage to my old vlog channel. This is a series called Cooking with Robbie Dobby, and essentially what we're going to do is we're going to cook, as you will see behind the scenes in the vlog, this will be more of a behind the scenes video, ground beef, or ground bison, and mashed potatoes. Am I good at cooking? No. Are you going to watch this fucking video? You better fucking watch this video. First things first, going to boil some water for the old potatoes. And then once this water is boiled, we're going to throw in the potatoes. Uh, we're, so we're going to chop up those potatoes right now. We're going to throw them in and we're going to salt the shit out of the water. So we got to cut up all these potatoes. Uh, fuck sanitation, it's my house. So what we're going to do is I cut the potatoes however I want. So what I like to do is I just like to cut the potato down the middle and then just kind of cut it into little cubes like this. And I, it doesn't really matter. I do skin on mashed potatoes because I like potato skins. I like how they taste, yada, yada. What really matters is that we're getting them small enough to evenly boil. Um, is this a professional recipe? No, this is some shit I have figured out through bodybuilding and how many consume potatoes and wanting them to taste good. This is not gonna have macros on it because I'm not gonna do that. I'm too lazy, but what this is gonna have is potatoes falling off the counter because I have a tiny little cutting board. And what's important about this recipe is that I put almond milk instead of regular milk and that makes it have less calories and then as well, I do use butter, which a lot of people don't approve of in bodybuilding, but butter tastes good and I want to be able to eat this food for the rest of my life. So I use butter as well as the almond milk, but I don't use too much. And so that's why this shit ain't going to make you too, too fat. Though if you're bulky in the off season, you could add a little bit of extra butter for easy calories. Um, I don't personally think that getting a bunch of calories from fat is a good thing. All right, now that the water is starting to boil over here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this ground beef. So what I like to do for the ground beef is I like to go low and slow, um, and also spill a bunch of ground beef all over my stove top. Um, so I like to go low and slow on the ground beef, and what I'll do is I'll just start chopping it up. I use rubber, uh, rubber spatulas, not metal spatulas, because I don't wanna scratch my pans, but in turn what that does is it makes it a little harder to chop up ground beef. So we're just gonna chop away like crazy. I like my ground beef a little finer maybe than some people or rather ground bison. Um, so we're just gonna chop this up until it gets kind of thinner. Now that we have the ground bison all chopped up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start grabbing some of our seasonings out of this cabinet here off screen. And I am gonna show you the basic stuff that I put in my ground bison, I'm going to be honest, this might not taste good to everybody, but this is what I do. So first we do garlic powder. I think that's a must. That's a standard. I like to slightly over season. This is 10% ground bison. So it's 10% fat. So the um, juices are going to really come out as this heats up and I do some salt. Um, I usually don't do it directly to the shaker. So I'm probably gonna be a bit inaccurate with this, but I don't have my cute little strawberry shaker right now, so you'll be seeing that in a future video. Um, I like salt, salt is good for you. Don't have iodine shortage in your diet. If you eat healthy, you need to salt your food. Just, it's literally how your muscles contract. Do not, not salt your food. I'm telling you, salt your damn food. All right, Nashville hot chicken style seasoning. You're thinking, oh, chicken style seasoning. Bro, I put this on my popcorn. Hashtag Greg Set. thank you so much for that popcorn tip, by the way. Anytime I'm in a deficit and I'm extremely hungry, I will literally replace rice with like a gigantic bowl of popcorn and it's it's so much better. So Nashville hot chicken seasoning, um, it's literally zero calories. All these seasonings are zero calories. It's literally just a spicy chicken rub. And so what I'll do is I'll just kind of throw that seasoning on there. I'm a little more modest with it because I know how it tastes. I'm more used to it. If you don't know how it tastes, don't um, don't just spam seasonings on like this. This is some. This is a recipe I've made literally a hundred times. Now that we've got our potatoes chopped up and we got our water to a rolling boil, what we're gonna do is we're going to pour the potatoes into the water. 
pretty standard stuff. So what I like to do is I like to take the knife that we used, covered in starch, and just slowly like let get the potatoes into the water. This is pretty scuffed right now. If you can't tell, I've never cooked in this particular kitchen I'm in. Um, I'm also a professional fast food worker. So um, this is the quality of worker you should expect uh, spilling water all over a stove that I now have to clean up. <laughs> so what you want to do next is you want to get your salt. Don't put it on this setting, the crazy man setting, the it's sociopath setting. Put it on a regular setting and just modestly pour a ton of salt in there. You're not eating every gram of that salt. What that's doing is it's flavoring your potatoes. And now not everybody does this. I'm not sure if there's any scientific reason to do this, but I like to put garlic powder in the water with my potatoes personally. And then what you want to do is just basically bring it back to a rolling boil. And then we're going to set a timer for how long we're going to cook it. What I like to do is just set a timer right here. So timer set, put it up for 15 minutes. That's about how long it should take to boil the good old potatoes. And once that timer goes off, your potatoes should be done. The low and slow ground beef should be done and you should be ready to eat your bodybuilder food. If you're wondering why I'm doing this series, one, it's kind of a joke. I'm paying homage to an old series on my old channel and I do enjoy cooking even though I'm not necessarily a five-star chef. When it comes to making meals that bodybuilders eat, I do feel like I have kind of an idea of what I'm doing and I am able to throw together some decent food here and there. Also, the main reason I'm making these, this video is because there's a lot of 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, fuck 30 year olds that don't know how to cook like basic food. This is going to be a very basic tutorial. All the steps will be in the description. One will be for potatoes. One will be for ground beef. They're super basic, but at the end of the day, these basic steps could actually help somebody. So if you want to see the series continue, go in the comments again, leave something for me to make next. I don't care if it's a joke. I don't care if it's funny. I don't care if it's real. If you're actually curious, whatever gets the most votes or whatever ends up being um, the most frequent comment for a recipe, I will make it. And either you can make it, you can show how to make it your way and I could try it out for a video and it can kind of be a fun interaction we do. Or I can make it my way and it will turn out like atrocious garbage, but you will still eat it because I'm a master. All right, last thing we're gonna do uh, for the, the potatoes or the next step for the potatoes is that you're gonna grab the potatoes off of the stove now that they're done boiling like a fucking man with your fucking hands and then you're gonna pour it into this colander in the sink. I know you can't see that shit, so I'm gonna have to move you over. Pray that I don't die. All right, in this colander in the sink, uh, I would pour the water high at first, and then when it gets the potatoes start coming out, it just depends on the size, the amount of potatoes you're doing, the size of the pot. I do enough potatoes for two meals, some I'm lazy as shit, I don't want to make much meals. I had one potato turn out kind of strange, so we're going to pick that out. It happens sometimes. When that happens, you throw that shit out. Don't put that in your mouth. You're fucking better than that. You see that? You're better than that, bro. You want that shit in your fucking mouth? No, I don't think so, bro. You're better than that. We're bodybuilders, not animals, all right? Get that straight. So the next thing you want to do is lift the colander. Shake, 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 shake the colander. Get all the water out, the excess water, and you want to pour it back into the pot. And we're on to the next step. All right, so I'm gonna keep this on very low heat, literally the lowest heat setting possible just to make sure there's a little bit of heat going on in the pot. There is no reason for that, it's a force of habit. You're gonna grab your fucking butter. Okay, look, this is a lot of potatoes. This is three gigantic potatoes that are like this goddamn big. So dude, we're gonna use a lot of butter for this. So just don't be alarmed when I use literally a quarter stick of butter. That doesn't mean that you eat a quarter stick of butter every time you eat potatoes, that means that Imagine this is probably about three servings of potatoes, maybe one and a half. So you're gonna put a quarter stick of butter in there. You're gonna be a cool guy. I'm a cool guy, you're a cool guy, all right. And then what we're gonna do is I usually like to eyeball the milk and I pour it in as I go. So first we need the butter to start melting just to kind of be able to make it more mixable. We're gonna get the potato masher 
and um, we're going to get the milk. We're going to start pouring in just enough to get this kind of started. So this is almond milk. I do you. I am using vanilla almond milk. I was out of unsweet almond milk. I usually use unsweet for this. I'm not using vanilla for my coffee. The reason I use vanilla for my coffee is it tastes better. Coffee sucks. So what you're going to do is you're going to start smashing this. If you don't have a potato smasher, you could do it with literally anything. Don't be a pussy. You could smash it with your goddamn fork. You could smash it with your goddamn hands. Don't smash it with your goddamn hands. By the way, it's extremely hot. All right. We'll put a little bit more milk in there. I do go a little milk heavy because I go lower on the butter content relative to the amount of potatoes in here. Is that a scientific way to make mashed potatoes? No, it is not. It's absolutely not a scientific way to make mashed potatoes, but we're not a scientific channel. We're meatheads that lift things and cook food, all right? So that's what we do. That's what we're doing. Cool, cool, cool. Glad we're on the same page. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a little bit of garlic powder up in here. I like garlic powder if you couldn't tell. It's one of my favorite things on the planet. There's been, we are going to add a little more milk, but I like to add a little bit of the seasoning before just to get everything in the stuff. All right, so here we're going to get some black pepper. I did not come prepared. I had to grab it out of the cabinet. I like to put a lot. It's personal preference. Just depends on who you are. Black pepper doesn't cause cancer. Who cares? If it doesn't got calories, you eat it, end of story. That's how you get big, that's how you get full, that's how you get thick, that's how you get dense. Low calorie, volume, lots of protein, lots of carbs, less fat, don't be fat, don't be fat. All right, salt. So we're gonna have to do the taste test, that's kind of how I do this. I'm not super strict with every single macro all the time. So you don't have to, you know, unless you're on prep, if you're on prep, don't listen to me, this video is not for you. Do not eat potatoes in prep too much. You will get fat. But what I like to do is like to mix it thoroughly. So once I am done with the potato masher, I will take a taste test by scooping the potatoes all up together. Probably gonna need a little more milk than this. But let's just see the seasoning. Honestly, it's pretty much perfect. It might not look like the prettiest mashed potatoes you've ever seen in your life. But that's pretty damn good. I'm gonna put a little bit extra salt in there. Salt your food, salt your food. As Santa Christian says, you don't salt your food, you're a bitch. Make sure your food is nice and salty. I'm gonna add just a tiny bit more milk in there because I like my mashed potatoes a little creamier. But if, at this point, I would say the mashed potatoes are pretty much perfect and that it's not a required thing to do. I just prefer the creamy texture of mashed potatoes because I'm a little princess. And uh, little princesses like creamy mashed potatoes. All right, that's how you make the mashed potatoes. And as far as the ground beef goes, it is settling on the low heat. Take, the, take it off the heat. It should be pretty much done. We, have, we put it usually, okay, so if you have numbers on your stove top and you don't live in an apartment like me and you're not a degenerate, um, you're gonna wanna put it around three or four. Um, which is just below half, as you really remember it. It is thoroughly cooked, nice and juicy. It absorbed a lot of the fats. Let me turn that off so that the audio isn't horrendous. It absorbed a lot of the fats, and now you have yourself some nice ground beef, you have yourself some nice mashed potatoes, and we're gonna do the plate reveal. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you make a plate to get swole as hell. And remember, always team fork. We do not team spoon. This is the taste test, so I'm gonna give you uh, my honest <laughs> out of town on how this tastes. Tastes like mashed potatoes that I eat every single day of my life. Try the ground beef. Team fork. Screw team spoon. We struggle for our food because we're alpha. The ground bison honestly turned out pretty damn good. <laughs> Um, I added a little extra of the spicy seasoning, and I'm not gonna lie, that, that's pretty damn good. Easy palatable food for bodybuilders alike. Um, easy little changes you can make to this recipe if you are a little uncomfortable with the old fats. You could do 9310 and set on the ground beef, and I would just add a little bit extra seasoning in order to make it taste good. Um, 
And I would say for the mashed potatoes, if you want to do a little less milk and a little less butter, or do an unsweetened milk and a little less butter, you can lower the calories. But at the end of the day, it is potatoes, it is beef, you're going to put in your body, and you're going to grow. So if you're trying to get shredded, this is not the meal for you, um, unless you are literally an IFB pro bodybuilder, and you're so huge that you can justify eating whatever this is, eight and a half ounces of meat and um, literally uh, eight or nine ounces of potatoes. Leave a like for my guy Kunkin, and make sure to leave suggestions in the comments below for any future Robbie Dobby, Cooking with Robbie Dobby episodes as well. Check out my personal brand, practicalskinandhair.com or Practical Skin Care. We have anti-aging products and anti-acne products at the best prices on the market. 100% work, I literally use them myself. And check out my Instagram to see me naked. Peace.